Today's episode is brought to you in part by White Cat Entertainment. From films to podcasts to comics, of course comics, but even those books with decidedly fewer pictures in them, White Cat Entertainment is definitely a place you should stop by to check out some really cool geeky things. And also, they are the reason why we have this episode today. Both because of the sponsorship I didn't talk to them about, and also because they're the ones putting out the comic we're talking about anyway. I'm SP from Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., a show about the general Marvel comic universe, part of the Guinea Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other hilarious and fun geeky shows at guineageeknetwork.com. And welcome to Play Comics, where once again, I just, I don't even know if I want to make regular episodes anymore because I am having way too much fun talking to guests about their cool things. This time, I have the return of Chris Mancini and Fernando Pinto, unless you want to say Fernando Pinto and Chris Mancini. I mean, they're both equally awesome. I don't know who to put first. We are talking... <laughs> about their recently as of it's today okay. as of recording good i'm so <laughs> yes. glad you guys don't care because i didn't even think about that yeah we're here today yeah, to talk no. the second volume of rise of the kung fu dragon master volume two so i guess yes. this is the first volume of volume two absolutely yeah, gonna stay in there just like that yeah <laughs> so how are you guys doing today we're doing uh, we're doing great. Thanks for having us on the show. Actually, the Kickstarter literally launched today, so we've got that. Uh, you know, I've got that um, refresh finger that keeps um, hitting Kickstarter over and over again for the first couple of hours, but it's going well, and uh, we are happy to be back. I already. I'm um, getting uh, um, Twitter emails about uh, questions about the book, so that's always a good sign. Uh, some very odd ones, too, which is good. Like, uh, when it says physical copies, do you mean actual copies of the book that I'll get mailed to me? I'm like, yes, that's what a physical <laughs> copy means. <laughs> yes, person on the internet, yes. Yes. <laughs> I really wish I was doing this as video right now for everybody so that everybody else could see my face because what the hell? <laughs> really? <laughs> the internet is a magical place full of magical wow. people. It truly is. It's uh, just when you think, well, that this I can't get anything crazy or emailed to me or, or tweeted at me. Uh, that's it. I, I'm like, oh, no. Yet, yes, I can. Something else. Something is beating what happened yesterday. <laughs> so let's get things going cool right off the rip. What is your elevator pitch for Rise of the Kung Fu Dragon Master? Rise of the Kung Fu Dragon Master is a, an action comedy a graphic novel that is kind of a love letter to all the 80s movies I grew up with, from uh, Jackie Chan to... Uh, uh, the Goonies to um, anything Stranger Things has been based on. <laughs> and uh, hmm. um, like all the ones that are like A Big Trouble in Little China, all these movies that I grew up with and I absolutely loved. I wanted to kind of do a, uh, a really funny action uh, comedy with all these elements of like martial arts and um, a hero who can't get his shit together ever. And uh, um, on that journey of like discovery and um, learning about himself and violence and how toxic masculinity is and how toxic violence can be and how how do you find peace when you're already so far uh, away from it uh, and uh, but I wanted it to be funny and I wanted there to be actual dragons in it and uh, I, I put it together and um, the, the one takeaway I would want everyone to have with the book is to really just have a good, fun time with it. And then occasionally, if there's a poignant character moment that uh, makes you go, huh, 
All right, I've uh, I've done my job, but mainly it's to put a smile on your face with uh, a hint of nostalgia, but also for the action uh, comedy crowd. And uh, that's when Fernando uh, came on board, and we have a shorthand now from long ago and far away. So he kind of already knows what the humor looks like and what it should look like and how it can integrate well into the action. Because I still wanted it to be authentic. And uh, the, the actual elevator pitch is Rick, a small time crook in Los Angeles, accidentally gets the power of the dragon and is thrust into a mystical uh, battle between good and evil that's been fought since the days of ancient China. And that's our jumping off point. Yep, what Chris said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he does such a wonderful job. I mean, it's almost like he's yep. been working on this property for a good while. You would think yeah. that's not the first time he's said those words in that same yeah, order. Yeah, you know, it, it's weird how rehearsed sometimes those things come out. So. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Here are the list of questions I've asked you to ask. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, here's so... a peek behind the curtain for everybody. I don't prepare questions. Come on. I actually only have two <laughs> questions prepared. And one of them is the same every single episode, and the other one is from a random list of things. We'll get to those later. So, what made you want to start? I mean, I'm going back to the beginning here, but what made you, what gave you the inspiration for Rise of the Kung Fu Dragon Master? It was um, it was on the kind of on the heels of uh, Long Ago and Far Away, and I, that was kind of like my fantasy comedy story. And I, I, I obviously I'm going to stay in comedy for a, a, a rather long time, uh, but I wanted to do something that was a little more action oriented, and also um, Long Ago and Far Away was also very nerdy with like a lot of references to pop culture. I wanted to kind of get away from that, where a, a lead who's just a violent fight club fighter probably doesn't watch a lot of things outside of UFC, um, doesn't read a lot of comics. Like, I wanted to kind of get away from that uh, um, nerdy feel for the characters. So I thought jumping into um, the things that I grew up with, with um, with 80s movies and even some 90s movies too, and Jackie Chan and all of those things, I thought was kind of a good jumping off point. And it also um, made me think about like, well, what can I do in comics that you know you can't do in other mediums? And it was just to create this uh, kind of like epic visual um, story that would also have a rather large amount of special effects if we were shooting it as a film. And uh, I wanted to really put it together in a visual funny way, but also uh, remain true to the action uh, and the, um, the storytelling as well. But the, the inspiration also came from um, all the martial arts movies that I grew up with as, as a kid, everything from, uh, uh, we used to have something called Black Belt Theater that we would watch on UHF, which used to be uh, when you had, I'm, I'm dating myself, when you actually had uh, TV channels with uh, not quite as many. And uh, we would watch those on Saturday afternoons and they would be horribly dubbed, but we would be sitting by the TVs watching them over and over and over again. And it was uh, just really, really fun. And I always go back to that inspiration as, as well. And Fernando, how did you get sucked into the project? <laughs> uh, gambling debts. He has pictures of me. <laughs> I needed the money. That sounds about right. Yeah. No, I can actually, neither uh, confirm nor deny either <laughs> any of those things. <laughs> yes. Allegedly he has pictures of me. Um no, uh we well we got hooked up uh through Jonathan London who does uh the Geekscape podcast. Um I had done some comics with him and my sort of style and vibe has always been kind of humorous. Like my own work, uh my first graphic novel warped. Um, my current uh, work doing Gun Punch and all that other stuff. I've always been really into like funny comics that are also like have a lot of also have a, a, a lot of action and and cool characters and colorful and everything. So Jonathan uh, recommended me to uh, Chris and he was like, oh, all right, this guy 
this guy looks all right, I guess. And we started doing long ago and far away. And after, I, I suppose it was I don't a better know. reaction Maybe. than that. <laughs> yeah. This guy looks okay. I, I guess. Yeah, he's all right, I guess. Uh, but I think because I think because uh, Chris mentioned before that uh, our first project, long ago and far away, that was a longer road for you, right? Because you had worked with other artists that didn't meet deadlines or something, right? Oh my God, that was a um, um, that was a huge long road because that one actually started off as a screenplay that was in development in a couple of places, and then it, um, it 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 never got into production. But I always retained the rights, and then it was actually going to go on uh, Mark Wade's um, site, Thrillbent Comics. That uh, that then right when we were going to go into production, it uh, all the funding fell through. So Mark actually helped me kind of shepherd it into. Uh, um, its current form and um, we used Kickstarter and uh, yeah when we started with uh, Thrillbent there was a couple of artists that fell through that, that you know didn't deliver anything and it, it was a it was a mess and then I was like I, I'm gonna just talk to my podcasting buddies I'm sure they could help out at this point it, it's weird where you're like well podcasting can it goes into so many different places into the universe it, it's at first, it seems crazy. Why would you ask podcasters about comic book artists? I'm like, oh no, that's they're they're there. There's there's connections. And as soon as I told uh, Jonathan what I was working on, he's like, oh, well, you gotta you gotta use Fernando. And then when I saw his work and we we uh, met and, and hit it off, we're like, oh, that would that's perfect. And uh, um, we started uh, kickstarting it. We put it into production. It was a we didn't break it up. This was a, a much longer project. And uh, when we, we ended up uh, making it, and then Mark Wade uh, did a nice forward for the book as well. And then it ended up at uh, Starburns Press as a, uh, as a digital book. So, uh, and then it went back into development again as a TV show. <laughs> so it's still, it's still circling around uh, Hollywood. So we'll, we'll see what happens uh, on this go around. Well, why do you think I'm really talking to all the creative people here? I just want to make giant connections so I can hook people up and make things happen. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But yeah, like after we were done with that one, uh, Chris was like, do you want to do another one? I was like, what's it about? It's like people kick, kicking each other at jokes and dragons. He's like, all right. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> That's a much shorter elevator pitch. And honestly, it hooks me it just is. as much as the real one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I kind of like it better too. So <laughs> <laughs> it's about people kicking kick each other. But yeah, yeah, like I, I'm not, I'm not like the biggest kung fu guy. So when, when we we're we started on the project, Chris was like, okay, you have to watch these movies, and he gave me a bunch of like old right. martial arts movies, and I'm like, oh my god, this is great. So now it's it's been super fun. Like I, I I'm really into action movies, but not as specific as like kung fu cinema or anything like that. So it's been it's it's been a fun project to work uh, to work in but also it's been kind of a learning experience and like uh referencing all those weapons and the types of kicks and the stances and all that stuff so it's been really fun yeah it's it's really cool one of the things i i, I love working about fernando is that um he 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 never walks through anything he puts the time in like uh, you think oh well these are uh more humorous and cartoony drawings um and yeah, there, there's one element of that, but the other element is Fernando takes the time and he does the research and we, we go through sometimes uh, reference drawings and like, this is what it should be, this is what it should look like. And even when we were doing Long Ago and Far Away with the um, medieval things, even things like armor or swords, we go through it and, and Fernando's always down for uh, <laughs> drawing something he's never drawn before and checking out references because what happens is it makes the project more authentic even on a subconscious level, like if all that stuff is in place, it really makes everything else kind of uh, um, have a nice foundation to bounce off of like jokes and action from that. So it's always, uh, it's always a good thing. Well, this is quickly turning into the long form list of reasons why Fernando is in my small group of people who will do the art for my thing when I actually get it written. <laughs> uh, yeah, Which I'm my, being completely my... serious about. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's awesome. The one thing is, I have like my whole year planned out so far. So take your time writing it. Like, oh, that's cute. I'm how totally you think down. I've gotten further than the last time we talked, anyway. All right. Cool. All right. 
Yeah, that's another sign, uh, you know, when someone's in demand, it's like, oh, we, we got to figure out the schedule. And we've always been able to do that for sure, like uh, with the uh, mm-hmm. end. Um, it, it's also one of those things where you get excited and like, oh, I, it's it, it's it's great. I, I want you to be excited, uh, working and uh, um, less available, but not too less available so you can still work with me. So it's a, uh, <laughs> right. it's a happy for you, but uh, also, yeah, but um, uh, I, I still want you around. <laughs> And also <laughs> yeah, a selfish like, yeah. jealousy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I mean that's great, but I don't want to share you with too many people now that <laughs> <laughs> They all have pictures of me, Chris. I can't help yeah, it. I, know. I, un- I understand. <laughs> I've done bad things. <laughs> Speaking My of bad things, danger. I was going to ask you about this later. <laughs> but for the cover of the Freaks and Gods trade paperback, who picked yes. the font? Oh, I, I did not do any of that. Like, I, I just did the drawing, so... So that's so that was Mike looking at my logo and everything and picking the same font. I, I could be man. It, I just turned it in. And it is. <laughs> All right. Cool. Now that you, that's you need out. to talk to him about that. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I, I did. I thought it was for, hilarious. Uh, All right. Cool. Yeah. For people that don't know, I did the cover for the Freaks and Gods trade paper bag that Two and Five Inc. Put, put out. Uh, I think it was last month, June. I think it was. It was pre-orders last month and coming out this month or next month. I can't remember. Oh, all right. That was, a, that was a fun gig. I liked it. I spent like three months telling the store, hey, can I get this yet? And they told me, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> indie comics. Yay. Yeah. You gotta love it. <laughs> Speaking of indie comics, what is it like coming back for another round on Kickstarter of a property that you know got funded the first time? You know what? Um, I'm more cautiously optimistic this go round because uh, people have enjoyed the first volume. You know, I take nothing for granted, but I'm hoping that, uh, you know, this one might go a little bit more smoother. And, you know, there there's always that uh, hope of like, well, maybe it'll overfund and, you know, we can pay everybody a little bit more and, you know, make more books and stretch goals and all those things. But... Um, it's off to a really good start, getting a lot of great support from Kickstarter. It's a project we love on day one that they they uh, earmarked it for that, which is great. So I'm actually, um, the more Kickstarters we do and the more fans we kind of like accumulate, uh, I think each one will get a little bit easier. And um, that's kind of the goal. The other thing is to get the books out like a little bit faster like we're we're working on like workflow with the letters and the the book design and and with fernando to try to get things started a little earlier before the kickstarters actually start so we can act like you know more like a publisher where you know there's uh, less of a delay between the campaign and actual delivery of the book so we're we're hoping people stick with us and we've got the, the one thing i will say is our kickstarter fans are incredibly supportive they've come from um fans of the comics fans of my podcast the they're just you know fans of when i was doing stand-up and all, all they, they come from all different places and they've all been like super super supportive uh, fernando's fans have come over even fans of like the uh um the pinup artists have also come over and it's it's been really great and uh we just want to grow the really cool fan base because uh we like every single fan that we uh uh, we've added and they're they're all really great and even like uh, the emails that we get like hey something happened to my book they're almost like sorry to uh, bother us I'm like no it's okay if the post office destroyed the copy that you're supposed to get no problem we will be sending you out a replacement uh, it's not your fault <laughs> yeah and like a uh, 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 thing that we did is like okay we really want to do volume two but we're not gonna ask anybody for a cent before volume one is out in people's hands, which I think, I think people will appreciate. And if they enjoy the first one, I think I'm, the second one's even crazier. So I hope they'll yeah. come back and support it. For sure. So what about for people who miss the first volume of this? Um, what is the best way for them to be able to see it? Well, we've destroyed all copies of the first volume, so there it's yeah. it's gone. I don't know yet. 
that's just the way yeah, you and do they business. Need, they, need and, uh... to, they need to take a good hard look at themselves and ask why. <laughs> why did you miss it? You know? Yeah, Ugh, we're, um, you know, we're very strict at, uh, yes. <laughs> with these yes. campaigns. Um, so w the way that people can get volume one is we've added it as an add-on for volume two, but also during the campaign, there's also just reward tiers where you could get uh, both of them together. You could get a package of uh, physical or digital or both for uh, volumes one and two. And if you don't want to wait, you can actually go to the White Cat Entertainment store at whitecatentertainment.com and there's copies there as well. And uh, you can just buy one there and I'll ship it out. Okay, but what if I think your guys' work is so amazing that I want to get everything I can possibly get my hands on? Is there an easy way to do that? That's a great question, Chris. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's other tiers on um, on Kickstarter where you'll get all of the um, Mancini and Pinto digital books. You get Long and Go and Far Away. Uh, you'll get um, Rise of the Kung Fu Dragon Master. You'll get Warped, and uh, I think it's one issue of Gun Punch, I believe. And yeah, Sam's big chance was. Uh, yep. Yeah. Which is, uh, and I have to say one thing about Sam's Big Chance is also like kind of like based on rom coms in the in the eighties and nineties, and I absolutely love that graphic novel. It's it's. Um, so if, if you haven't seen that for, uh, for with Fernando, it's it's super good, and uh, that's included in some of the higher tiers. And there's also a physical tier too. If you want uh, Dragon Master books one and two and Long Ago and Far Away physical copies, uh, that's also a tier. So you can get everything uh, there uh, as well. I mean, if you listen to this in the past, because I know I'm not going to get it out fast enough. There's even a tier where you can save money, but get volumes one and two. Yes. Yeah, there but was then a you can five later too, so don't worry, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so it was five dollars off for the first week. You could get volume one and two together. See, this is what happens when you don't plan questions. You get to ask the real ones that pop into your head, <laughs> you and go. you don't get stuck on a script. <laughs> Good stuff. So I'm seeing here too that a lot of your um, physical copies are coming signed. You know that's just that's something that I'm usually seeing people um, getting more money for. Like yeah, you can just have the plain book, or you can give me an extra five, ten, you know, however much it is dollars to get it signed. But I'm not seeing that from y'all. It looks like every single physical copy is going to be signed. No, I people actually um, charge for it. Yeah, I know it's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Wow. I um, yeah right. I want I wanted to I wanted to just um, uh, sign every single one and sometimes I write little things in each one and it's just it's something I enjoy doing because it kind of personalizes a little bit um, you know and uh, so I, I didn't want to make that a separate charge or a, a separate tier um, every physical copy of the book will go out signed and uh, possibly with something else snarky for me written in uh, with Sharpie. I'd be disappointed if there wasn't anything else. <laughs> <laughs> So are they going to Fernando first and then you to be signed, or are you going to sign up first and then send them to Fernando and then send them back their customs again to get to us? Yeah, if Fernando lived in Sherman Oaks, <laughs> that would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they will be signed no, we... by me, and uh, and then uh, <laughs> Fernando, uh, I'll make sure I'll send him some next time he's in a con in the states, yeah. and he'll be able to sign them at cons. There you go. Yeah. If COVID ever ends, I will have some yeah. copies signed for people. But I usually do New York Comic Con or uh, Chicago Con. Or I see two weeks, sorry. And uh, they can get it there. But other than that, it's just Chris's signature. Mm -hmm. I do want to make sure everybody's expectations are set at the right level. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's good. That's good. Thank you. We don't want any more emails like, okay, this book that I did not know would come to my house as a physical thing does not have yeah. enough signatures. Yes, it uh, it startled me when the uh, it was brought by my mailman. <laughs> <So> <laughs> yes, I don't like what your is this, paint. paper? <laughs> <laughs> so based on this interview here and talking to both of you, because I mean, both of your individual episodes, you ended up talking about the other person a nice chunk of the time it seems like you guys are going to be doing a lot more projects together 
We are indeed, uh, and it's one of those things I've been I've been you know working with, uh, as a as an artist and with writing and and uh, with filmmaking and stand up and running podcasts. Like I, I've had different partners here and there, and uh, when you find a really good collaborator, you uh, blackmail them with pictures and you keep them around for as long as yes. need be. Yes, please. If my family hears this, <laughs> get me out of this. Uh, yeah, dude, no. Uh, we're already like cooking up more projects, and also Chris has ideas for sequels for both yes. uh, Long Ago and Far Away and Rise of the Conqueror Dragon Masters. So if things go well and we don't get sick of each other, we should be working together for a long time. Yep. And we're hoping to put out at least one book a year, but you know they're they're a little longer than uh, than just floppies. So it's uh, you know the the timing is uh, um, we have to work it out with schedules. But that's that's definitely the goal to try to do at least uh, one a year. I mean, one a year is still a lot better than I've been able to put out. So you're beating that. Yeah, but like, I, and also uh, it's these are like indie comics projects which means you have to work on other stuff also to like make rent and stuff so if yep. they don't come out as <laughs> as fast as we'd like them to but they'll come out yeah exactly it's uh you know it's um there is the the timeline i used to i did indie film and you know indie everything it's uh the, the timeline is fluid you know the old the old saying fast you know cheap or good you know pick two so it makes sense in everything that we do creatively. <laughs> and y'all are putting out really good stuff, whether it's the two of you together or if you cheat on each other and work with somebody else. <laughs> so you. the wait is definitely worth it. <laughs> there you go. Good. So what's the craziest fan theories you've heard about what's going to happen in volume two? Um, I haven't heard any, actually. <laughs> actually yet there hasn't been a lot of um uh, marvel type chatter on uh what the next phase of rise of the kung fu dragon master will be i think uh um, because everyone just kind of got the book over the last couple of weeks and we you know we were we as soon as everyone got it we wanted to jump right into volume two so we're not giving fans a chance to speculate so no but we're giving them a chance to give us more money so we can give them cool books so (laughs) yes that's a, a chance they'll get from us other right. than that, stay silent. No. Yes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, not silent. People I'm definitely take... going to go in and say, hey, buy this book, take all my money. There yeah. you go. Yeah, that's the kind of not yeah. silence we like. I'm also yeah. going to predict the aliens, because why not? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Why not? Exactly. I mean, I'm basing myself off of absolutely nothing, because... I am one of those sorry people who missed volume one somehow, and I blame both of you for that because neither one of you told me on time. <laughs> I'm sure. We're just, we don't that, post that, and pester everybody yeah. with the link every time we're doing a campaign. Yeah, you know what? That's a fair criticism. We'll take it. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm very disappointed in you, but I will make up for it somehow. <laughs> in the best way I know. We- <laughs> <laughs> we hear you and we'll try to be better yeah. thank you that's all I ask <laughs> yes actually I'm really excited to follow along with this one um, I mean not the comic obviously I'm excited to follow along with anyway because you both do good stuff and I know I'm going to enjoy it but this is the first Kickstarter related episode I've recorded for a while with that is near the beginning like everything else I've caught lately has been like halfway through the project or somebody that i i've talked to enough and i know it's going to be a real easy edit so i don't mind squeezing one in at the end but they've all basically been funded when i've done it so i'm excited to have one you know that i'm catching at the beginning that is not anywhere near funded you know because it's like 12 hours old as of the time we're recording this right and i get to see if my kickstarter streak gets to continue for real not just these cheap singles keeping a hit streak going (laughs) well we're hoping it does so (laughs) i mean if anything is going to break my streak i'm going to bet that it's not with you guys 
<laughs> I, I, we we hope so as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. But and this is um, um, every podcast, every tweet, everything always helps. So this is uh, every, everyone. There, there's always a myth about Kickstarters. Like, well, if I just get on this one show, or if I just get this one person to retweet me, then it'll fund in like uh, you know ten minutes. That's not the way Kickstarter works. It is uh, it's a slow build all the way towards the end, and every little uh, every show, every um, mention, every press hit, it all um, creeps you up closer to the goal. So that's. Uh, slow and steady. It's we're 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 comic tortoises, not comic hares. Exactly. I think you have to be like kind of famous for it to fund in like the first day or something. It, yeah, exactly. You either need uh, a, a giant name or a giant IP, and then it uh, it goes pretty quickly. But uh, you know, when the, with the uh, when you're just kind of bringing your fans along and introducing people to new things and and uh, and uh, new projects, it takes a little longer, but it's also really worthwhile because those fans that have kind of discovered you stick around uh, for because they they like you and want, and want to see what you're going to do next. So um, it, it, it's the one nice thing about the Kickstarter is where you don't feel like you're starting over every single time, even with a new book. Like you feel like you've already you're it, it, it builds, which is really nice, which is what I like about the platform. Yeah, and not to like toot our own horn but we've delivered on both kickstarters you know like yeah even if we've taken a little bit longer like chris is really really good about like talking to people and letting them know where we're at and giving them previews and stuff like that so if any of our projects ever take a little bit more time to get done because of whatever life throws at you like we will we'll deliver it to you like we're not one of those kickstarters right. that are gonna just run away with your money and like not give and we'll you keep you posted for. the whole time yeah, yeah exactly exactly not like some people who shall not be named because i don't remember <laughs> well, there's a names. lot of them yeah <laughs> yeah no i, mean, I think like i've done a, a really good job of having people on the show who you know have you know followed up with their stuff and maybe a couple of them have taken a little bit longer or a lot a bit longer than they wanted to to get things done but they've at least kept the backers up to date on what's going on so you know it's, i'm not just sitting no, here in the dark yeah. not having my comic <laughs> but i mean the, uh, talking to the people that support you that's like the least you can do right like mm -hmm. that's that's the minimum effort like they're they're letting you uh create your what you thought up like your dreams right it sounds corny but it is true like it, it, this doesn't happen without people backing it so if people like m who uh, make make their own money and they give it to you so you can make the stuff that you want to make if if you don't like at least throw them an email every once in a while like like what are you doing man <laughs> yeah it's very very true like people are trusting you with their hard-earned money in advance and the least you could do is keep them posted and you know i 99 of the people uh, have backed Kickstarters before, or understand how it works, and they're super understanding. What you can't do is just, you know, not say anything and, and not communicate with people because that people don't like, and it's understandable. Like, all right, well, hey, what, what, what's going on? So you got to keep um, uh, keep your 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 patrons and your uh, 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 Kickstarter backers informed throughout the whole process. Would D2 have Patreon stuff that I don't know about either? Uh, oh, not oh me. wow, oh. that was it. Yeah, or is I that do. just a I word that is clung into <laughs> yeah. our lexicon here? Yeah, how did that <laughs> word get in there? I, uh, <laughs> I don't know huh. how that happened. Yeah. Now that you I, mention it. <laughs> yeah, that's so wow. weird. Um, yeah, uh, White Cat Entertainment actually has a, uh, a patron just for the company. It's not for one specific uh, project. And uh, it covers like all of the, the podcasts and the graphic novels and you know, I do updates of like uh, with the podcast, some bonus material, and then some like sneak peeks at like art that, or uh, uh, projects that we haven't released yet. Uh, so yeah, there there's a Patreon for White Cat Entertainment, but it's it's um, it, it's more company wide than it is uh, um, project specific. Yeah, I don't I don't have. And a I'm Patreon. not entirely That's sure. Like, like... And I was gonna say. <laughs> I was, I was going to add, I'm not entirely sure 
how um, effective that approach is <laughs> to do an overall patron for your company rather than a single project. So the jury is still out on that. <laughs> yeah, but Patreon is like a full time job. That's why I can't I can't do it right now. Like, because you have to like give people content, right? And I have like four projects going right now, so I, I <laughs> there's there's not enough hours in a day for me to have a Patreon right now. Yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a whole nother thing you've got to feed content to. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I know I have enough problem just getting the episodes edited fast enough to get my patrons <laughs> early access. <laughs> <laughs> and since I don't really put ads in the episodes anyway, it's not even like I'm giving them anything different. I'm just giving it to them early. Mm -hmm. Right. What has been the most surprising thing that you've come across working on the second volume? Um, the, the most surprising thing is, uh, and I don't want to jinx it, but how smoothly it's been going <laughs> <laughs> with, uh, because, you know, we were dealing with, um, everything from COVID to, um, we had some workflow issues with, you know, we, we were switching editors at one point. And, uh, uh so it was, uh, it was a lot of, uh, moving parts last year, but, uh, it was something I definitely learned from, and I, I definitely tried to streamline and get everything together. The other thing I, I made sure I did is I had the Volume 2 campaign kind of ready to go um, months before we had actually uh, um, finished delivering the uh, Volume 1. So I wanted it like ready to go after those books went out. So I tried to put do as much in advance as possible, and that... Uh, worked out. If I hadn't done that, we wouldn't have launched um, today when we did. We would. It would have been a little more time. But um, that was a pleasant surprise. That uh, this is <laughs> this is the workflow is going much smoother than uh, last time. Yeah. Um. Uh, on my end, there there haven't been that many surprises because uh, I read the whole script like over a year ago, so I, I knew where it was going. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh on the script itself uh other than that um nah man it's just been pretty like as chris said you don't want to jinx it right but so far it's been right. pretty smooth sailing uh and yeah yeah we have a couple we had a couple of hiccups with volume one that weren't too bad they seem bigger at the time but uh so far it's so good so yeah well i definitely don't want to jinx it either but i think somebody has uh backed it on Kickstarter while we're recording and that person is not me. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, awesome. My problem here is going to be deciding which level I want to back it up. Because you had to go be an asshole and have lots of good levels. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best compliment we've had all day. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and how far do you see this story being able to go? I have planned out um, three books um, broken up into two volumes each. So it will be, um, it will definitely be three um, full stories each volume being um, about 100 pages so there's after this one is done there's at least 400 more pages to be uh, made for the Rise of the Kung Fu Dragon Master saga and I'm assuming Fernando's art will look pretty enough to be in a giant yeah yeah I was gonna say uh, I think uh, Fernando just had a heart attack <laughs> yeah I have to go charge and they're all my coming out now. next year yeah. yeah of course I mean, if there's a publisher out there that wants to, like, front us the money for it, dude, yes. I said we'd talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I'm, honestly, though, I'm assuming Fernando's art is going to look good enough to be in, like, big old omnibus-sized pages and everything. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll say yes. <laughs> you are your own worst critic. Take my... Yeah. compliment and like there you it. Go. Yeah, I, I, I can't say like, yes, my art will be gorgeous twice up. Like, I don't know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> 
It'll be the right res for an omnibus. There, maybe that's uh, you could there um, you go. take yes. baby steps towards accepting the compliments. So <laughs> there you go. Yes, I will talk about it with my therapist next week. Yeah. <laughs> they said nice things to me, and I did not know yeah. how to react. Yeah. Yeah, I said nice things and it made me angry. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> what are these feelings? These feelings. It's something we all have to work on, isn't it? <laughs> Indeed. Well, yeah, you don't want to be that guy, right? That's like, right. oh yes, I'm amazing. Like, <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do have some sad news about this one now. I cannot be the first person to grab the early bird copies anymore. Because it looks like a couple of those were snatched up. Oh. I know, what made you decide to go with a timeline there versus just, like, the first hundred people, no matter what the timeline is? Um, you know, it was uh, one of the things that happens with Kickstarters is... You know, all of the algorithms and the data tracking, it always looks better if there's more pledges towards the beginning because that helps everything kind of track better. So anything you can do to encourage um, uh, pledging early rather than later is, um, is what you really want to do. That's a much nerdier answer than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it makes perfect sense. I, I was, I don't know what I was expecting with that, to be honest with you. Oh, there goes Fernando on his motorcycle again. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm sitting outside and the motorcycle went by. Sorry about that. <laughs> now I'm still here, waiting for those 400 pages that I have to draw currently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, just wait till you get mine. There will be time travel and I don't know what else. And bison. Uh, uh. <laughs> and bison. <laughs> there you go. Why not? Bison. Megan Fluffy. Like... No, sure. All right. So since y'all, I'm going to say it, you don't have to agree with me, but I'm going to say it anyway. This is my show, so it's the way it's going to go. Since you're both successful comic-making people, if nothing else in the fact that you have made comics that have gone out and people have paid money for, what advice do you have for somebody looking to get into working on comics? Um, you know, it's uh, <laughs> I'm still kind of... Uh looking for that first kind of paid like uh, for higher gig so i'm not quite there yet i don't feel like uh, i can actually give advice as far as that goes uh but i will say this like i've had i've been able to create things and have them picked up like as acquisitions and through pub uh, a publisher so that i can speak to um and the the thing is it's it, it's the old age old adage of like well you can't wait for someone to give you a green light you have to figure out a way to make something for yourself and if you're an artist you know draw if you're a writer write and um there's ways with like as we've, we've been talking about with crowdfunding and other ways to you know get a team paid and but here's the thing even if uh you know you want to just kind of write and draw your own comic just to put it up as a webtoon you, uh, a web comic you don't you don't really need permission from anybody anymore to uh to make things so uh, be creative with your creativity on how you can um actually get something made and never let a um a barrier stop you as far as creating goes and also never wait for someone else to tell you yes you can do it yeah, I think I would say the same thing. Uh, just just make stuff and get it done. Like, uh, start small, do a small story, then go bigger, like do like a three-page story, then a five-page story. If you can't draw, find someone that can, that can draw. If you can't write, find someone that, that can write. If you can do it all, try to do it all yourself and work with other people. Like, there's so many ways to do it. Like, uh, it... If you don't want to do or if you can't do yet like something to what you would consider professional level it doesn't matter 
just get it done, get it out there. People will like it. If, if, if it means something to you and you think it's cool, other people will think it's cool, right? So just do your own thing, work with others, just get stuff done. That's, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, create, and don't try to make the next Spider-Man. Create something, like Fernando said, that means something to you. And if it means something to you, it's, um, you know, it, and it's personal, that people will relate to that more than something that looks like Captain America. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what you have to do. There's already a Captain America, and the people working on it are not getting royalties, apparently, so just do your own thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently you'll make the same in royalties, so... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and yes, I am feeling personally called out by that. Thank you. <laughs> I yeah, needed that. Fine. I'm That's... being completely serious. <laughs> <laughs> That's for you and your therapist, sir. Yes. <laughs> Why do you think is the other reason I do the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. So as we start to wind things down, I do need to know, though, for sure, who was your favorite Muppet? <laughs> Gonzo. Like, next question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, could that um, could that uh, answer kind of change? Like as a kid, it was Fozzie, Fozzie Bear. But as I got older, it ended up being Peppy the Prawn. <laughs> Peppy's pretty cool. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's, it's uh, I'm gonna really go on a deep dive on this, uh, where uh, there was one I, um, incarnation of the Muppet Show where. Um, Prince was on. He was the guest. And they showed all these outtakes with Peppy the Prawn and Prince, and he was uh, um, trying to present different desserts to him, like uh, a raspberry parfait. And then finally he just said in his accent, Bavarian pretzels. And then uh, Prince just started busting up laughing, and it was like one of my favorite outtakes. <laughs> nice. Was that from the 90s-ish one? Probably, probably, yeah. It's uh, It's got to be on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, but why is that not on Disney Plus and everything else is? Mm, good question. I mean, I'm assuming music rights, but still. Yes. And, and I think, it, it, like, the Prince state has a strong, like, a very strong uh, policy of his stuff not being anywhere. So, there's probably a lot of that. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. And yet he did a hologram appearance. <laughs> Although, from my experience, people whose favorite is Gonzo, it it is Gonzo. It always was Gonzo, and it always will be Gonzo. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's it's always been Gonzo for me. Like he he has weird relationships with chickens. He he gets <laughs> shot out of a cannon. You know. He has a weird nose. He wears cool shirts. Yep. You know, he's the best. Mm -hmm. He gets his own sound effect when he appears. It's like that wood. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What else you want? No? Yeah. <laughs> and finally, if you had to do a PhD in something, what would it be? Oh, probably astrophysics, so I could leave the fucking planet. <laughs> Uh, that might be part of the same conversation be... we're having later. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, a PhD, that's a lot of reading, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, podcast question answering. That would be my PhD. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be a professional at this by the time we're done with you. There you go. <laughs> Just go to Chris and Chris's podcast school. <laughs> yes. I don't think you guys are accredited, though. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if my. <laughs> well, neither are the Webby Awards. My but those have gone too. Yeah, it's an online uh, class, Fernando. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Cool. All right. Do I get a certificate? Like I completed it? Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. <laughs> And I get printed at home and everything to send me a PDF for my name. <laughs> yeah, it's a PDF. Um, you know, the, the signature's already there. 
<laughs> there you go, just know your name. <laughs> yeah. So, most importantly, though, if people want to see more of your work, hear more from you, all that fun stuff, where else can they find you online? Um, I started a new content company last year uh, called White Cat Entertainment that I've kind of put everything under that one banner. So there's podcasts, the comics, there's a store, and you can kind of find everything there at whitecatentertainment.com. And you can also get links to the uh, Kickstarter there as well. And for me, you can go to linktree slash uh, Fernando Pinto Art, and you can get all my stuff there, my website, uh, my webcomic, Gun Punch, which comes back this month, and all the other stuff that I'm working on, my, and all my social media. So linktree slash uh, Fernando Pinto Art. And as always, we will have links to all that stuff down in the show notes, because clicking links is so much easier than trying to remember how to spell things. Yeah, who, who spells True. Yeah. No, nobody. No. I don't even press all the buttons anymore. I just swipe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You write this for me, computer. So, as always, if people want to hear more from me, they can head on over to Twitter at PlayComicsCast or just go to PlayComics.com, where there, technically there's links to other social media things, but it, it's mostly Twitter for me, let's be real. And if you want to help support the show so that I can keep talking to cool people like Chris and Fernando and sucker more people into coming on the show and talking about their cool stuff, you can head on over to Patreon, you know, look for Play Comics, or, you know, you can take the easier way and go to playcomics.com slash support and click links where you don't have to remember how to spell things because it's easier there too. Play Comics is part of the Gunna Geek Network, so if you want to hear some more wonderfully geeky shows and people who use other words to describe geeky shows, because somehow wonderfully is the only word I can think of when I'm doing this, head on over to GunnaGeek.com to check out all those. If you like the music that I'm rudely talking on top of right now, you can head on over to SoundCloud.com slash Best Dash Day, but most of all, just take your stack of games and throw it away, because you're going to grab a whole stack of of Chris Mancini and Fernando Pinto comics instead and go find yourself a new favorite character. And done. Yes, I'm sure. Okay.